Traveling from the Dominican Republic to the British Virgin Islands last week was a pretty uneventful five days of sailing, fishing, boat showers, and hanging with dolphins. That is, of course, until just before our arrival to Roadtown, when we managed to break our force day that helped support the mast. This week, we enjoy some BVI sailing and swimming and make some new friends along the way. We find a replacement for our stolen engine and solve our anchoring problems for good. Now that our mast was properly secured again with a new force day, we were ready to test it out. And I can't think of a better place than the BVI's with its short island hopping and easy sailing. Our first stop was up to Jos van Dijk, an island popular for two fun beach bars. But first, we had a job to do. We had just purchased a new used dinghy motor from some fellow cruisers and now friends in the BVI's and we needed to make a bridle for the dinghy. This would help us to raise it up on a halyard each night where we would also lock it. The most common and secure way to store your dinghy among cruisers so that hopefully there would be no more nighttime thefts while we slept. We tried to capture the sunset for you from up on the hills of Jos van Dijk, but the view of all the charter boats at night was much more impressive, and it really made you realize how many boats are packed into each small bay. What you doing? Watching these guys, they've, they've just dropped their anchor, like, on our anchor. Like, dropping it nearby and you go, ooh, I'm worried they might swing into us, but dropping it on it, <laughs> and you think, I want to sit where we're sitting. <laughs> Look how close they are. And they're not even done falling back on it. Actually, they're pulling it in now. Please don't pull ours up when you pull yours up. <laughs> Watching charter boats try and drop an anchor is... Well, this one's from Puerto Rico. I don't know if it's a charter, is it? Oh, surely. That's one of my favorite things. It's hours of free entertainment and it's a very busy anchorage so there's, it's never ending fun. I wonder how much they drop. Less that's, than us. That sand patch looks really shallow. Yeah. Now their buddy boat has come over and is trying to anchor super close to them as well. But one of the good things about crowded anchorages and beach bars is the people that you meet. Like our new pals, Lori and Steve. Two friends on a holiday who are unusually natural at Beersby and decided to adopt a few stray friends for a couple of days. We explored a few places together on the island of Tortola for both snorkeling and a couple of drinks. But before we knew it, it was time to say goodbye. They did, however, give us all their BVI travel tips. So the next day, we decided to check out a couple of sites that they recommended. And first up was the Indians, a group of rocks known for good snorkeling on our way to our next anchorage at Peter Island. Spent all my time picking four leaf clovers Up on a hill made from gold and silver If it went for my mind, I'd say I'm getting older Hold on to time so I can say they're over Spent all my time picking four leaf clovers Up on a hill made from gold and silver If it went for my mind, I'd say I'm getting older The pale blue skies Drifts I 
drive you through the night And sunscreen smiles White as pearl Those soft rib curls In those eyes I couldn't hide I grow older, older We made a quick pit stop at Peter Island just to see the beautiful anchorage and to find out what all the hype was about on the old ship converted to a bar called Willie T's. We are leaving Peter Island, heading up to Beef Island, and although Peter Island is a beautiful spot to anchor, it's also a pain because you anchor in 40 feet of water, 35 feet of water, so it's horrendous when you don't have a windlass picking up the anchor in 35 feet of water. It's tiring. You've got to mentally prepare yourself when you wake up in the morning. Picking up the anchor. 35 feet. John got in his dancer size and sailing nap on our way to the Beef Island Anchorage at the airport, where we dove on our anchor and then wandered through the carnage left behind after the 2017 hurricanes. I've just got back from diving on the anchor, so we dropped the anchor and put the snubber on and then our normal routine is to back up on it to check that it's nice and secure um, and so this time I thought I would jump in while John backs up on it just because I wanted to see well we wanted to see exactly how how it's always dragging and takes so long to to get a proper set I jumped in got down there and John backed up on it and you can see already it was buried in okay, it doesn't, I don't think it always falls at that good of an angle. Um, but as soon as he starts to back up on it, it just starts to drag, even if it's at a good angle dug under some sand. And so I buried it in a little bit more. It seemed to hold enough. I mean, I think the chain does half, half the work, but the anchor certainly doesn't, doesn't always pull its weight on the other half. So it seems okay for now, it's a relatively protected bay so we aren't too worried here and yeah we actually were, we're in this bay because we're meeting some friends of ours who picked up a new anchor for us. So the way this is going to go, if all goes to plan, is I'll pull the jib down the starboard side, sorry, down the port side, and then once it's all the way out I can quickly let go of the halyard, jib halyard, 
and I should be able to walk forward and pull it all down and it shouldn't go in the ocean and we shouldn't sail forward on the anchor because there's only like three feet in front of us. There we go. That went rather well. So the plan of attack is to loosen these two screws off as well as the three around the base here and this should slide up. That should give me access to the locking nut at the top of the furler then I'll need to undo the locking nut at the bottom of the furler and simply twist the whole drum around and it should tighten up. Yeah, it definitely needs to be a little bit tighter. I don't think I quite nailed it the first time around. back up it looks pretty good seems to be a little bit tighter perfect amount of tension I would say before it was wobbling in the wind so we sort of realized that it was too loose now it's good so we realized that we told you we had a broken force day but we didn't explain why it happened uh, so what actually happened was two things the main reason was that this little clamp here had come undone but of course you can't see when you furl up your jib so what that mean was that the foils dropped down and caught on the nut inside the furling drum and as we furled it it started to wrap and twist the forestay inside the foils and the weakest point was at the top right near the fitting and that's where it twisted and then broke so now we've marked it and we know the measurement is two fingertips and there's a little mark on one side that we can uh, just check every time that we fly the jib just before we fill it up we come forward and we just check that the foils are at the right height we also check that the clamp is tight on the front of the furler there so now we know to look for it so the other reason that we think we broke our force day was because we uh, run up our storm jib on the crossing from Bahamas to Dominican Republic in the run. Uh, and when we did that we didn't add in because we didn't know the extra piece of line to extend the top of the storm jib so that the top of the furler is all the way at the top of the foils. What that meant was as we furled in we got what's called halyard wrap and the halyard wraps around the forestay as you wind it in adding twists it up uh, and, and we think that led to uh, some weakening of the forestay as well. So now we know we've learned two things. One make sure your foils are high enough and two, extend the top of that uh, um, storm jib or any jib so that, what do they call that bit, the car? No, the... It's the furler. No, uh, the furler is the bottom bit. The whole thing's a furler. The head of the furler, the head section of the furler. So extend the top of the jib so the head section of the furler makes it all the way at the top. Uh, and we've got our halyard restrainer up there on the mast already. Uh, that was one thing that we did right. And that's because we didn't do it. The people at the rigging shop did it. That's probably why that bit was done right. And uh, that just holds the halyard back 
nearer the mast so to try and prevent some of that twisting action. Luckily we have a keel step mast so it is supported to a certain extent by the deck so it can't just fall over easily uh, although it can still snap. Even having a furled jib you get some support at the front of the mast because it's attached to the furler at the bottom and then it's obviously attached to the halyard at the top uh, so it does give the mast some support even though it's loose and can just give you enough time to, or well, gave us enough time to stick two halyards up and create a little bow bridle uh, to take most of the weight off the jib because it's definitely not good for the jib using it as a as a fall stay. Live and you learn. We got out of the lot. We are just settling into the new anchorage at Beef Island where we have dropped Zach off at the airport after five weeks and now it's just going to be two of us on board for a while which will be a bit strange. And we're also meeting our friends that we met in Nassau, uh, a catamaran called Sarabi. And they are coming from Puerto Rico to Beef Island. And before they left Puerto Rico, they stopped at a West Marine. So we asked them to pick up our newest purchase. Wow. So Rabi just stopped by and brought us our newest addition to the family. Our, what is it, a 15 kilo? Yeah, 33 pound rock naranja to replace our 35 pound CQR. So we've gone down in weight, apparently, <laughs> and uh, up in holding ability. So it's, um, it's exciting. Oh, Ooh. it's gonna rain. I better take this inside so it doesn't get rusty. Quickly. It's okay, Rockner. What about me? No. Oh, it's okay, we're safe. Stay tuned next week to see us get all dressed up in celebration of a special anniversary at a beautiful restaurant before we set out to another new island where we have this popular tourist attraction all to ourselves. Then see how our first drop of the anchor goes as we finally get rid of the old CQR for our brand new Rockna.